Hey developers, today I wanna to show you guys a really cool website, it's coder.com. It's a cloud-based IDE that you can use to create your projects in. So you don't have to worry about trying to set up your Mac or Windows or Linux and trying to get everything installed. This actually does everything for you, which makes it really easy to get started. Now, by the way, this is in private alpha, so make sure you watch all the way to the end. I have some keys I wanna give out to you guys, so stay tuned. So you can see here, I'm on the front page of coder.com. They call it an ID for everyone. So it can give you a little bit of an idea. You can see here, it says develop without limitations. And it has tons of uh, support for a lot of languages, 15 languages with full support, real autocomplete syntax, highlighting, linting, and go-to definitions. You can code, compile, test run, and even train the AI. So this is really powerful. You can see here's the supported languages. Uh, one really neat feature that we'll be looking at a little bit further in this video is the fast time. So fast time dynamically scales your computational resources based on your needs up to 96 CPU cores of power. And of course you can create your containers within seconds. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the coder.com and show you some features and then we'll create a real quick mini app. Uh, I'll create this to do app right here using uh, basic to do MVC. Uh, using Vue.js. So we'll take a look at how that works. Okay, we're logged into the coder.com. So let's take a look at what we have. And of course, like I said, this is an alpha, so things are changing and some things aren't available right now. But for first thing you could see is that we have these projects and containers and we can click create project and create a project. You can see right here, it tells you our fast time balance and I'll show you how that works here in a moment. And this is a way we can speed up our development time. We can see our disk storage space that we have. And then we also have a couple of other options. You can see this is a dark theme. So if you're familiar with the Visual Studio code, they have different themes. Uh, many other IDEs have the same thing. So if you can actually click select theme and this is the Atom dark theme, but we can certainly go to Coder dark if we wanted to. We can even do a, a lighter theme if we prefer that instead. Uh, you can see here there's a bunch in here, but I'm just gonna st stick with Adam Dark for now, but it's cool that we have that option to change those. So we also have a control panel here. We, we can see right now we're on this free plan. We have fast time, we have disk storage. We can see how much of our container space we've used. Of course we have documentation and then we can have redeem fast time code. So I went ahead and created a few projects here already. So that's why you see this one called Ember Jet and Fun Project, but I can create a new one. I just click create project here. And then it'll ask me the name. I'm just gonna call it uh, to do. And then I can put a description in to do this, uh, my to do app. If I had multiple collaborators, I would they would be shown here in these boxes. I also can do a little bit of configuration. Right now, only I can do description delete. That'll change in the future. So then I just click an open IDE and that'll go ahead and open it and create the container and instance for me. So this will just take a moment. Okay, uh, I went ahead and created our development environment here. You can see this is what it looks like. On the left-hand side, we have our Explorer and then we have some icons down here and we'll go through all of them. And then we have the file edit view help at the top. And you can see here we have nothing in the directory, so it'll ask us to create a new file or create a new folder. So we'll do that in a moment. So first I wanna show you have this explorer. You can click on it, you can get rid of it. We can also create new files. So I can create new file, index.html, for example. It goes ahead and creates it. And then you have the editor here. And then this is where you can start typing and, and editing, adding information in for your website or whatever you're trying to create. And of course, this isn't limited to just JavaScript. We can certainly create Go projects, C++, and really any of those 15 languages we saw on the previous screen. But for the purpose of this video, we'll just look at just creating a, a quick app. We can also do searches if we have multiple files. We can add collaborators. We can also connect to a web server, which we'll take a look at too. We have this um, this is the console. So here we have basically root access to a console here and we can, a container, which we can then install just like a Linux or Mac container. We can install packages. We can do everything we normally would. Um, so I want to show you um, one interesting tidbit before we get into creating the application that we're going to create. And that's this 
this one right at the bottom and let me close this collaborators is this button here and this is the fast time button so I have a project I want to show you guys that's already created so if we look at this project I'm gonna bring it over here so you can see this project here is called view enterprise boilerplate and it's by my friend Chris Fritz and he kind of put everything you would need on a very advanced view project and you can just download or clone this we're not going to use this today but I want to show you a, a nice thing that we can use with fast time so if I copy this here and I'm in my directory here I'm going to just get clone and I'm going to paste that option here and it's going to go ahead and clone it into the view enterprise boilerplate directory which I can see is right here now as you know you can use yarn or npm to install the dependencies that are in the package.json file okay let's go ahead and run npm install and we'll see how long this takes now I don't have fast time on right now so I'm also going to have this timer here we're just going to time it to see how long it takes so uh, one second I'm going to do npm install and I'm going to start this timer with a couple seconds difference. You can see that it's using 100% of the CPU right now. You can see on the bottom of it and it's actually saying maybe you should use fast time but we're not going to use that right this second. We'll use it in a moment. I just want to show you how this works. Okay, uh, it took about one minute and 45 seconds, uh, probably more around 47 because I started a little bit late. So let's go ahead and try this test again, but this time we'll have fast time on. So I'm going to clear this. I'm gonna RM RF the node modules folder. And this will just take a moment. And now we're gonna, to just make sure we did everything right, we're gonna do npm cache clean dash dash force. So we're not using anything in the cache. Um, just to make sure should be all out of there yep so we'll do it again one more time make sure it's good and now we're gonna go ahead and click on the fast time button so it's on and I'm going to do the npm install this time and see how long it takes so start the timer Okay, it's done. You can see a minute six compared to what was a minute 49 before, or probably, probably minute eight. So definitely an improvement in speed. And you can see how this can be really important since how long it takes to run tests, how long it takes to run, build your, make your builds. This could be a really important thing. And you don't need to have a huge server every time you run these things, maybe just for certain blocks of time. So that's what's really cool about fast time. So I'm going to turn it off right now, but you can see that is an awesome advantage of it. Okay, let's take a look at creating our to-do app. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do some copying and pasting here, but I'll show you how easy it is in this editor to get a project up and running. So you can see here, I'm on my index.html. Um, you can see here, I still have the view enterprise boilerplate, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. I don't really need it. You could certainly keep it if you needed it. Let's just take a second. Okay, it's gone. I could have also right clicked on it and went to delete too. That's another way of doing it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create two folders. So I'm gonna create one called CSS and one called JS. And I'm gonna put my CSS files in that folder in the CSS folder and JavaScript files in the JS folder. So first I wanna to go to my index file here and let's go ahead and I'll just go ahead and copy and paste from my other monitor here and I'll explain what everything's doing. So just one second here. Okay, so here is the JavaScript here, or excuse me, the HTML. And so you can see from the top, and I'll close this for a second. You can see from the top, all I'm doing is I have uh, my doc type here, I have my char set, I have my to-do app, and I'm including the script tab for Vue.js. And then inside my HTML, I have a list of to-dos. And each to-do, this is actually an input at the top, where you can type in the to-do to task that you want. And this is bound to the new to-do V model, um, which I'm gonna be showing you guys later in the JavaScript. On my keep, every time you hit enter, it's gonna trigger the add to-do method. 
and we're gonna have this text what needs to be done as our placeholder and it's gonna auto focus as soon as the page loads the actual list of to do's is under this main section and then for there we're gonna do a v4 and we're gonna do to do and filter filter to do's and so that means we're gonna have a filter to do's which is going to be a list and we're gonna each one is gonna have to do and you can see there's this class right here and what this is saying is when to do.completed is true you'll see this completed class if not you won't see it and same thing with editing if to do equal equals edit to do then yes editing class will show up and that's actually in some CSS we're going to be adding later and then we have this view um, this input so we have this checkbox we can check mark things as completed or not completed um, that also triggers this v model is bound to this so that way if you check mark something it toggles it we have this if you double click on something it does it triggers the edit to do method you also have a button here so if you click on something you can remove it it looks like an x then we have this whole editing mode where we can edit any to do's and once again we have a couple methods this done edit and then we have a button we have something as mark is all complete and then at the footer we can do different filters for how we want to see our to do's so that's that's really simple there so let's go ahead and inside the CSS folder we're going to create a new file and this one we're going to call base.css uh, to match what we have here at the top base.css so I'm going to copy and paste this from another another screen here so there it is and what's cool about this here's all my CSS is that you can type in something in here like background color and it'll show up which is really nice you can actually auto complete it here so I'm just gonna go ahead and save it and now I'm gonna go ahead and create my JavaScript so now I'm gonna right click here and go to new file I'm gonna create an index.js file and I'm gonna copy and paste from my other monitor okay and let me go through this so you can see here, this is my Vue.js code. This is my Vue instance. And inside my Vue instance, I have my entry point, which will be at to-do app, the CSS. And then we'll have this return object. We have a new to-do. Our to-dos is where our to-dos will be living at. We'll have edit to-do and visibility. Created, this is our created hook inside of it. We're going to, so as soon as the app loads, we're gonna look inside local storage and we're gonna get the item versus the storage key that we set up here. And we're going to set the to-dos array. We have this filter to-dos in case, um, this is actually what we use to display the to-dos on the screen. Then this is, uh, this is the more important part of the app. This is the add to-do. So we're just gonna push the to-do onto the stack every time we add it. And then we're gonna clear the input for new to-dos and we're going to save it in local storage for remove to-dos we're going to use splice and we're going to use set item inside the local storage edit to do we're going to set this edit to do and then done edit we're going to set for done edit and we're also going to set it inside the local storage so that's just a real quick overview of how we're going to use the index.js file and we're going to dismiss this we're going to make sure it's all saved and now let's go ahead and see one more feature. So we have the index.html, we have the index, we have the base. So we have everything in our app ready to go. And what's cool about this is we actually can use the web browser. So you can connect to your web server and you can essentially run your web app and you can even share the link with other developers, which is really cool too. So we need to start a web server and we kind of can run any web server we want. So in my coder IDE here, actually I have it halfway typed out. I have a lightweight server you can install called HTTP server. You just put tag G at the end and it installs. Um, since I have it running, I'm gonna run HTTP server. And then I'm gonna open it up in the browser. So I'm gonna click here and open in browser. All right, so here it is. Here's our app to do's. I'll make it a little bigger. I can put in, I don't know, dishes, laundry, mow the lawn. If I refresh the page, it stays there because it's in local storage. I can choose which ones are completed. I can go completed, look, I can delete them. So that's real quick of how to use our app here. You can see here's the URL. So I can just copy and paste this and give this to anybody else if I need it. 
So that is how you use coder.com. This is just a real quick overview of how to use it. Uh, but I think it really shows the power of, and all the cool things you can do. So I put some links below for coder.com. Make sure you click on those, check out the service. If you guys want a free code to get into the service, listen carefully. So if you guys watched the video, you saw all the different screens, I want you to tell me what sort of project you would use on coder.com and why you would want to use it. So let me know below. I will pick uh, some random people, five people to get a free code for coder.com to get into the alpha of it and check it out. So all you need to do is leave a comment below. Also make, su make sure you click and subscribe to my channel as well. And let me know what kind of project that you're working on right now and what kind of project you would use with coder.com and why you'd want to use it. So let me know. Thanks for watching.